Hey, welcome to this week's video. Imagine this, your business buys a home at the beach and uses it solely as an entertainment facility for your business. Can you fully write this beach home off? Then, let's say in 10 years when it's been paid off, you decide you want to start using the beach home as your own. Would you incur any tax consequences for this? Well, in this video, we'll answer just that and you might actually be pleasantly surprised. But, don't pack your bags left. Let's get to work and I'll show you how you could make this work for you and your business. Okay, so the basic rule is that the beach home, a ski cabin, or other entertainment facility must be primarily for the benefit of employees other than those who are officers, shareholders, or owners who own a 10% or greater interest in the business or other highly compensated employees. And I'll explain this a little bit more later on in this video. But if you accomplish this, you just created a 100% entertainment facility that is 100% tax deductible for you, the owner, and tax-free use by your employees. And it doesn't have to be a home. It could be things like a motor home or heck, even a bowling alley would qualify. As mentioned, to make this deduction stick, employees have to primarily benefit from the use of the facility, which means the rank and file employee group, which I'll define a little bit later, must use the facility more than you do. Think of this as a 5149 test. To see if you pass this test, look at only the days of the facility use and not the days the facility was available for use. So for example, if the rank and file employees use the beach home for 35 days during the year and you, the business owner, use it 21 days, the beach house would pass the 5149 test. Thus, the beach home would be deductible as an employee entertainment facility. Remember though, that actual use and not availability of the facility to the employees is critical to pass this test. Maybe have the employees sign a guest user log or something else to keep track like a photo and at the facility with the timestamp on the picture. The more evidence of employee use, the better. And don't forget to have proof for the days that you use the facility as well. As mentioned earlier, the facility works if it's primarily for the benefit of your employees other than those who are officers, shareholders, and owners with a 10% or greater interest or highly compensated employees. For the 10% ownership test, the law treats an employee as owning an interest if they are family members such as brothers and sisters, spouses, parents, grandparents, children, and grandchildren. So you can hire your family members as employees and count them, but this time as unfortunately doesn't work for the ownership test. Now, highly compensated employees consist of employees who earned more than $125,000 for the preceding year and were in the top 20% of employees when ranked by compensation for the year. So make sure you do the math and track this. It's very important. So some key takeaways. Well, the employee facility deduction is pretty straightforward. It has three great benefits for the small business owner that include you deduct the facility as a business asset, your employees get to use the facility tax-free, and you own the property and you can use it personally. And you can convert the property to your full use with no tax consequences once you no longer need it for business use. Note though, when you sell it, you could have a gain or loss on the sale and some possible recapture of depreciation, but you're still getting a pretty good deal in my opinion. So that's it for this week's video. If uh, you got any value out of the video, it'd be great if you hit that thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, it'd be great to have you on board as a subscriber. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and I'll catch you on the next one.